Yeah, hi, these comments are for Jay-Z, and this is Michael, the founder, owner, and the materials writer for the 7-step system to pass a TOEFL IBT. And uh, I want to take a look at your essay that you just completed for my TOEFL class. And you're one of my students at California State University, San Bernardino, right? Okay, so let's take a look at it. I'm going to go ahead and read all of your paragraphs, and then I will give you a score after. Okay, you say, when I was a child, my father usually told me something about America. I wanted to study in America in 15 years old. Okay, this is causing you some trouble. So, first of all, you have what's called a run-on sentence. You're joining two sentences together. I would put probably... Or maybe this, say this. My father usually told me something about America uh, where I have wanted to study since I was 15 years old. That's probably going to work. So do it that way. You say, uh, one year ago, not years, I came here to study by myself. I like America, a beautiful country and friendly people. I lived in a Chinese I would say person's house, not people's. I remember my first night in America. Instead of putting a comma, say, when I was sad, in my bedroom, no comma, because I didn't know how to do, no, no, I didn't know what to do for my future American life. So change how to what. The next morning, I wouldn't say day morning, just say the next morning, I met my roommate, a Chinese student, too. Because of him, I found a good way for my American wife. In my opinion, I think a good roommate must have an outgoing character and mutual tolerance. Okay, one suggestion is in the second paragraph, you might say something like this. First of all, it is important that a roommate be outgoing. For example, my roommate is a very outgoing person who always likes to smile to anyone, and he likes to talk with other people. And you say, because I was a new student last year and I was so worried about my life in America, that's not going to work there. You got because and and, you got some pretty big grammar problems going on. You have problems with sentence formation. You say, he found me didn't know how to keep a good mood every day. He always told me about his American wife. He just wanted me to study how to get a good wife in America. I don't know how to talk with people. When he had rest time... Okay, let me keep going. Uh, you really... Uh, Jay-Z, you need to get better control of your sentence formation. You're not sure when one sentence ends and a new sentence begins. What you're doing you're using a lot of commas. But remember, we have a lot of connectors. We have connectors like when and where and which and that. And you're not using those. You, you have, there's a lot of opportunities for you to combine some of your shorter, simple sentences. You can combine them together and create a little bit more advanced structure, but you're not doing that. You're trying to use commas uh, too much. So you continue to say, let's go to your next paragraph. Uh, I found my roommate had a mutual tolerance heart. Again, you're creating what's called, you're making a fact about your roommate, but you're not making the argument that you need to create the tone for this paragraph. So you say, you might say something like this. If you think about what you just did in the previous paragraph about outgoing, you might say, in addition to being outgoing, a roommate must also have a mutually tolerant heart. And change tolerance to tolerant, A-N-T, the adjective. You don't need the noun there. You see what I'm saying? So, Jay-Z, what you're trying to do is, is create a topic sentence that's arguable and not just factual. You say, although we came from the same country, we did not come from the same city, so we have a different culture. Sometimes... When I did a bad thing for him, for example, did not clean my dishes after dinner. He didn't say anything. He just cleaned the dishes. 
too many commas in there. You got, we always talked with each other after dinner. He usually told me a lot about how to get along with people. From then on, I knew I did many errors in my life. I wanted to change my life. So now I have many friends in this school where always, you can't say are, are always play. No, we are always playing together. I never forget my roommate, who you need to put in there who tells me a lot about how to live. I am very happy because I got a good roommate. I study a lot in American life. Okay, so now let's take a look at your score. This is important. You have writing skills, but you, you got a lot of improvements that you want to try to make uh, in the writing. So uh, I'm going to put you right now I'm going to put you at 2.0 out of 4 out of 5 which gives you 14 points out of 30. So the biggest thing here is you have numerous problems with word forms. For example, you're not sure whether to use a noun or an adjective or an adverb or a verb. Uh, I think also you have a lot of problems with sentence structure. It's enormous, the problems you're having. Mainly, you might want to write this down, comma splices. Comma, C-O-M-M-A, S-P-L-I-C-E-S, splices. Google that. See what that error is and how do you correct that error. Also, you can improve the organization of your essay. You have an organization, but you're not making your topic sentences, arguments, in the body paragraphs. And to help you get more development, I would recommend that you include three qualities of a good roommate, not two, and that helps you get closer to the 350 word limit uh, that you're trying to meet. Now for you, the question is, what do you need to do to get better? So I would suggest, based on the sheer number of grammar problems you're having, uh, I would suggest that you take a lot of time this quarter to go through my lessons. Lesson number one, lesson two, lesson three, lesson four. Also, go through lesson number seven. This takes you to a website. It's called A Writer's Reference by Diana Hacker. And I highly recommend that you go through all writing and all grammar exercises at that website. You want to complete those things several times until you really feel like you understand what it is you're being asked to do. Now, if you go to the writing section of my course, uh, I also have some suggestions here. Uh, I would suggest, based on your performance, uh, I would say, I think you could do better with uh, Lesson 5, Writing Effective Body Paragraphs. Read that lesson. Also read Lesson 5.1, Writing Effective Topic Sentences, and Lesson 5.2, Using Transition Words. You can definitely do better uh, by doing that. And then, I think you could also benefit by going to Lesson Number 7 and read some of the sample essays uh, in my writing section of my online TOEFL course so you can get a little bit better uh, you, you, you can develop a little bit better control uh, over your writing. And last but not least, uh, lesson number eight, it talks about how to make your writing more coherent. I think that when you go through that lesson, it'll give you some great ideas on four specific things you can do that can help you organize your writing better than what it is right now. Now, here's the thing. You now know what some of your problems are. You also know what you can do to solve those problems. Now, you may be asking yourself or say, you know what, this is too much, I can't do this. But I believe you can. A Chinese philosopher once said, many, many years ago, he said the journey of a thousand miles begins with the first step. And that's what you need to do tomorrow. After watching my video, take my suggestions one step at a time, one lesson at a time. You can begin strengthening your writing proficiency. 
you can make a difference. You will be able to communicate better by going through these suggested lessons. Alrighty. Anyway, thank you for completing the practice test. Uh, it was a pleasure to uh, read your essay, to comment on it, to give you some ideas on what you can do to get better. And I look forward to reading your next independent writing practice test.